Um, listen, I've been talking about these three months that uh, Jack was out uh, last season. It was 13th February to the 13th of May. Uh, in fact, his last game was a 0-0 draw. His first game back was a 0-0 draw. But in between, without Jack Grealish, Villa 1-3, drew 3, lost 6. They lost to Sheffield United, won one of seven home games. Drew with Wolves, Newcastle at home to West Bromwich Albion as well. Games in which you feel he may have made the difference and given them more points. So overall, um, they uh, won 16, drew 7 and lost 15 during the whole season in the Premier League. Okay, So without Jack Grealish, their form was clearly worse. With Jack, they won 13, drew 4, lost 8. So... <sighs> If you do a... It's a very rough calculation. It's not scientific in any way. But if you work out what their points tally could well have looked like if Jack Grealish missed the whole season, you're looking at ending up with a points tally of sub-40, probably being fourth bottom, maybe just about surviving. Now, I know it doesn't work like that because they've brought in uh, Buendia. Yeah, they've brought in Bailey. Yeah, and, and, and McGinn was out as well uh, last year at the start mm. of the season, so it took him a while for him to get going. Uh, uh, as well. I believe Aston Villa will be safe. Um, I don't think they're going to be pushing uh, for the Premier League or the Champions League, which they believe, even if they keep Jack Grealish. But for them to be mid-table at this moment in time, while they're still building, I think is would be another good season for Aston Villa. Sometimes fans are, are expecting too much too quickly. It's like Wolves. Wolves had that good season in the first season back, and then everybody expected them to be exactly the same the year after. You're one injury away from something happening. But I think what Villa have done, they've gone out and they've got a couple of players in, well, three players with experience, a Premier League, a couple of them. And when they sell Grealish and they get that sort of money, if they use it right and they get in another couple of players... What is the problem? Um, I've got, They're I've got, just not reliant on Grealish. Yeah, but I think the, they they stayed up, and that's all they did the first season back, and that's all they had to do. That was their target. They stayed up, but without Jack because Grealish, of Grealish, they would have gone down. Yeah, I think you're Absolutely, right. Absolutely, I agree with you. Okay, second season, they finished 11th. So if you're looking at a progression beyond that, you're thinking, okay, well, maybe they could be aiming for top eight, top six next season with Grealish. But he's gone, and he is brilliant. He's a brilliant footballer. So you, there's no way there's going to be no difference. There's no way they... I can't see them being no. better. If they are, Dean Smith is, is a miracle worker. Yeah, but I, I know that. And, and I, but I, the way I would look at it is, but you look at Crystal Palace, right? They've got Zaha and people talk about how good he is and they're reliant on him, which they are, right? But every year, even with him, look where they finish. Would they be better? We talked about this last year, selling him, getting a ridiculous amount for him when they could have, but they might not be able to do it now and building a team that can survive without someone like him. And what Villa are doing now, they've made three signings, they'll probably make another couple if they get the money in for Jack Grealish, and they might just be in exactly the same position they were last year, but they're going to miss their star player who's come through the system or whatever it is at Villa, and they loved him, but now they suddenly hate him because he's going to leave to go to a bigger... It's got to say, not... As in the history of it, but where they are now, Manchester City competing for Champions League and titles, Villa are not there. No. If they were, Jack Grealish wouldn't be moving to Manchester City. But they had a dream as Villa fans that he was going to lead them to. It's 10 that years glory. away. Well, hold on. They had a dream as Villa fans, and he is a Villa fan as well. I've so had plenty they, of dreams that don't happen. They, <laughs> plenty of them, let me assure you, since only, I've been a young kid. It's only ten past five. We can't go into that, mate. But what I will say is they thought he shared those dreams as a Villa fan as well. Okay, and it's, it's a little Which I'm bit, sure he does. It's naive, it's head in the clouds, because he's doing a job of, of work. It is his job, and he wants to go and win things. And he's, I'd say he's as guaranteed as he's ever going to be at a club like Man City to win something. At Aston Villa, it is a dream. It may come true. It probably won't. And he's got got them to a cup final. That's that. I mean, that was a long time ago, but he got to an FA Cup final. You know, they got they got to a League Cup final as well. So he's taken them close, but not close enough. Without him, I do fear for them. Don't don't forget, John Terry's gone as well. They are relying on somebody like Ollie Watkins having another. Terrific season. Is he going to back that Not up? Not if he they go be. and sign Tamah Hebron. Well, he's been there before, did well. Yeah, is that going to happen? Division. 
Well, if they get 100 million, eh, they can afford 40 million. Do they play Ollie Watkins and Tammy Abraham together? Why not? Does it make sense? Why not? Do they need other areas strengthening? Or do they change it? Do they go 4 4 2? I don't know. I can't help thinking that without Jack Grealish, they're going to be in a little bit of bother. Two different players, Abraham and Watkins together, why wouldn't it work? Why well, because they've got, they're going to be doing more defending than attacking. That's, that's how I see it. I, I just look at the shape of the team and I think a team like Villa is going to have to be more solid than have two out-and-out strikers. But I may be wrong. Dean Smith may have a brilliant plan. He may be... I mean, he's been brilliant so far at Villa. He may prove to be even better than I thought he was. But I do think they're in a bit of trouble. We'll see. In terms of Jack Grealish and the fans calling him a snake, is that out of order? Yep. Why? They said, but they did the same with um, a few other players. So, uh, Delph... Um, I get that about the new coin, but again, couldn't turn that move down. Mm. Uh, and he's had success. He, he, he won medals, didn't he? There, Delph. I think he did, yeah. By the time he was there, Gareth Barry. How, how can you actually criticise these guys for leaving when they did? Mm. You see, it, for them, it was for Manchester City when, when Barry went, it was the start of that dominance, wasn't it? Uh, he could not turn that down. He'd have regretted it for the rest of his life. Yes, Villa fans still nail him for it, and they're going to do with Grealish because they're upset, and I get that. But you, Jack Grealish cannot turn down the opportunity to go and play at a Liverpool, a Manchester United, Manchester City, or Chelsea. He can't. And Aston Villa, he hasn't been able to force his way into the England side, and he may be thinking, this is my best chance of doing that by going to a club that's regularly competing in the Champions League. Uh, let's take a quick call from Holly, who's a Villa fan. What do you want to say, Holly? Oh, well, I listen to you guys all the time. I just wanted to say I do really enjoy your show. Thank you. I, I got a little bit wound up earlier by a Man City fan, I'm not going to lie, because he was basically just saying, you know, they're not on the up. And we get that. We know we're not a Man City. I think the reason why so many Villa fans are frustrated is you hit the nail on the head. He's come through our academy. He's got us out of some really, really tough situations. He was the only decent player we had at one time. You know, we were relegated, he went down with us, came back up, like you said, went to an FA Cup final. All right, we didn't win. <laughs> we went to a League Cup final, we didn't win that either. And of course, it's, it's, it's the way the modern game is now. You know, players, they come and go. And of course, no Villa fan, well, I don't. I, I mean, I, I think he's brilliant. He's the best player I've seen in my time. I'm 35 now. Uh, so he's the best player like we've had that I've seen. Uh, so I can't begrudge him moving because why wouldn't he? He's going to be playing for one of the best coaches in the world. Um, his favourite player is Kevin De Bruyne and he's going to be playing alongside him. So you can't begrudge him that. It just it hurts more because this season we've kind of built a bit of a better squad than we've been able to previously. And we've made some really good signings. And it's kind of like he's going now when we're kind of on that progression upwards. But then at the same time, he's leaving the club at a point where actually we're looking better. It, it is a bit frustrating hearing, obviously, like Goffey, I've got a lot of respect for you, but when you're saying, you know, the, a mid-table finish is, that's enough for Villa, that's where they'll end up. At this moment in time, not yeah. not in five years, but can really afford to stay there five years? And then yeah, yeah. it doesn't happen, Look, where, he'll look back and think, I should have got to Man City. And that's the next point I was going to come on to. Is you're totally right. I mean, he's 25 now. Uh, he's going to be thinking, do you know what? If I get to, even if he plays one of the 10 years, like you say, he's got a chance next season. He could win a Champions League. He could. He'll probably be a Premier League winner. I don't begrudge him of that. I think what's also been hard is like he when he signed his deal like 10 months ago, and you're saying like my city, my home. I, I get all that. But it that it does still hurt because you've watched someone come through the academy and like when I hear Man City fans saying, Oh well, why are they getting so upset about it? Why are they so bothered? If Phil Foden left Man City tomorrow and he said, Do you know what? Well oh, I'd signed a deal and then moved on, they'd be gutted as well because they've watched him um progress through their academy, I believe. And but why is he gonna meet why why would he leave Man City though? <laughs> Well, say if... Only to know, Real Madrid, is, probably. I mean, or yeah, Barcelona. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's no need to go anywhere else, has he? Yeah, I mean, say, like, five years' time, like, when he's about the same age as Jack is now, I guess. You know, PSG come in. They, they would be gutted, but the difference is with them is that they can spend endless money on whoever they want. That, that's the difference. But isn't so the that's... reality, Holly, that 
It is, with with yeah, the greatest yeah. respect, Jack Grealish is, and I don't mean this in a bad way, he's too good for Aston Villa, he's too good to be mid-table. Yeah, I don't get that. And, and I think also, like you hit the nail on the head earlier as well, that's kind of why a lot of fans will feel that as well, because they know he's going on to probably win um, titles, like I said before, and he can't do that with us. And he was living the dream that probably every Villa fan has ever had, you know, of coming through the academy, being captain, you know, scoring against uh, Birmingham City twice, getting punched by a fan. Like, his story is, you know, it's like people always say Roy the Rovers, don't they? It's, it's literally that. He's, he's adored by everybody around here. So that's why it's so hard. And, and he's probably one of the last players maybe of his kind where they've come through and they're going to achieve on like a massive scale. It's just a shame it's not going to be with Villa. And I think that's why it hurts so many fans. Do you know what? I mean, Aston Villa have taken players from clubs below them down the years. Ollie Watkins, they took him from a club below them. It, this is the food chain of football. This is what happens when a player is too good. Whether he's come through your system or not, it, it's kind of irrelevant. If he's too good for your first team and somebody else wants him that's going to win stuff, he's going to go. That's mm -hmm. the reality. Villa yeah. have done it to clubs in the past. What about the, the, the kid who was at West Brom, went to Barcelona, is now at Villa? Louis Barry, how do you think West Brom feels about uh, fans feel about it, that? It's the power of money, and we all hate it, but we all want that dream. Mm. And it's no different if you're a footballer wanting to live the dream, or you're a fan that wants the dream. Yeah, but I get I get they're upset, but their star players leaving because it is his home, it is where he's grown up, it is part of his DNA. But he's off. Yeah, he'll still support Villa. But he's off. Villa fans want to win the Premier League and the Champions League. Of course they do, but that is a pipe dream. Jack Grealish can go and make it happen. He can make that happen for himself. And it's going to hurt. But don't call him rude names. He doesn't really deserve that, does he? This is TalkSport.